So what I'm going to talk about today is headaches. It's something that we, we get asked about almost every single day. So I believe that we should have a life without headaches. So this, headaches, this, this talk is about stopping your headaches forever. I'm not talking about temporary relief, I'm talking about forever. Um, so living pain-free without medication is what we want. Okay, um, so what about, what about headaches? Let's, uh, let's get into this. Um, many types of headaches, um, headaches, sinus headaches, migraine headaches, tension headaches, cervicogenic headaches, normal headaches. Well, what's a normal headache? So many people come in into our clinic with aches and pains. Well, one of the biggest pains that people have is headaches. So that's pain above this level, if you, if you like. So where's it coming from? What's, what's happening here? What I do want to do is really dig into this today and try and come up with some solutions. Um, what we don't want to do is become a victim. Uh, so what we have, we have a situation where we can be proactive or reactive. And um, if we are more proactive in life, then we can get a ahead of the game and this is what i really want to uh, get onto today so <clears throat> i think that you'll probably agree that many people think that headaches are the problem well actually as far as i'm concerned that is dangerous belief number one and there's a few so dangerous belief number one headaches are the problem well, actually we need to think a little bit smarter we need to be a little bit more intelligent about how we think about our body, I think. So headaches are the problem? No, they're not. There has to be something causing the problem, okay? What is the cause of the pain? This is what we want to get into today. So this talk is, um, it, this is part of our body signals program and we're covering all the various aches and pains and ailments that come that generally come into our clinics. But today, I think that we want to talk about mindset because I think the, your mindset is actually what drives actions and then your actions will drive outcomes. Think about symptoms. What are symptoms? Symptoms Obviously, that's what the medical profession treats. But symptoms is just signs that the body is going wrong. Something is amiss, if you like. If we look at this, here we have an iceberg. You can see there's a tip of the iceberg. That's what's sticking out top of the ocean. But underneath, there's a huge mass. Now, this, this is my an analogy. If you think of the pain, the headache being the tip of the iceberg, that's what's on the surface, and you can you can treat that with medication or a or a body rub or or something, but unless you get under the surface, and you address the cause, there's, there's something that's actually going wrong, and correcting that, then and all you're doing is tickling the surface, and it's always at best going to be temporary relief, right? Your body is always sending you signals. If things are good, you will feel good. That's a signal in itself. But think, if things aren't right, you'll start getting little signals. And the number one signal that we get from our body that something is amiss is pain. So we need to start thinking about how do we communicate with our body, but we need to listen to it. The first part of communication is listening. So what is our body telling us? I mean, are we even listening? I do wonder sometimes. We need to have more of an intelligent uh, outlook when we think about our own health because it's the most important thing we have. At any one time, we are somewhere on this, I call it the illness-wellness continuum. So let's, let's think about this. We're either obviously moving towards illness or towards health. Now, at, some, at any one time, point in time, we are somewhere on this continuum. If you're getting headaches or any sign or symptom, then we're on the left-hand side. Well, if we look at red hand, the left-hand side, 
That's the red side. This is the paradigm of being reactive. This is the paradigm of waiting for things to go wrong and then, and then treating them, hoping, hoping to, to find some kind of solution. But signs and symptoms are the body telling us something's going wrong. Eventually, if we just ignore them or we bury our head in the sand or something, then we will end up with disability. And then eventually down the road somewhere, hopefully way down the road, premature death. That's the last thing we want. Chiropractic is all about achieving a high level of wellness. And that's why we want you on the right side of this scale, of these scales. Most of our clients that come into our clinic are on the right side. They're, more, they're aware, they have education, they, they think more deeply about their body. But they're in growth mindset, if you like. What does that mean? Well, that means the body is able to adapt. We're always aware through education that our body's adapting and growing. Now, if there's something that takes us away from that balance, then we get symptoms. We need to get back into balance. And hopefully, most of us will end up, we float around the neutral point. I like to think that I'm mostly in the green or the blue. I do get some symptoms from time to time. I've had a, I've had a fairly normal life. So I've had, I do get some aches and pains. I spend a lot of time leaning over clients. So of course I get some tension buildup in my body, but I know how to get myself back to the right side. This is what I really want you to think in terms of by changing our mindset. Now, while we're talking about mindset, we have a world situation that's not gonna change dramatically in the very near future. This COVID thing is not going away. And that's why it's vitally important that we look after our, our own health. If we could go back to that continuum, the people who are going to be more susceptible to COVID are the people on the left side, people who get symptoms, whether it be headaches or whether, whether they, they're, they're going towards diabetes or whatever. They're not taking care of their body, not taking care of business. We want our body to be strong so the host will not entertain virus. So the reason why this is so important and, and we do this, these education talks on a, on, on a very regular basis is because we're faced with the statistics that are, that are very real in Singapore. Sometimes I think I'm on the front line because when I talk to people, I realize that these, these, these statistics are, are real. They are real. 80% of people in Singapore will succumb to one of these conditions. And it's not a very pleasant list of conditions. Arthritis, degeneration, diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer strokes, heart attacks. Oh my God, the list goes on. Well, recently in the last couple of years, we've had to add mental health and debilitating headaches to this list. Well, is this list even real? I mean, that sounds quite extreme, 80%. Well, actually it's very real. Half the people that are born in Singapore right now will get diabetes. Half the men that are born in Singapore will get cancer at some stage. Now, the, that is scary, but the good thing is that these are pretty much avoidable. They are pretty much all avoidable. They're all down to choices that we make. We have to understand that it's not down to bad germs, bad genes, or bad luck that we get these things. It's down to choices that we're making on a day-to-day basis so i really do think it's time to reprioritize this is a great time for a new beginning i've said here it's time to go on the offensive what does that mean well being a sport a sports guy i like to think in terms of defense and offense i like playing on the offense if we wait for the problem to come to us that's what we're going to get lots of problems so the best form of defense is offense so what, what does that mean well in the, these terms, it means being more proactive in life and less reactive. We want to have that mindset where we get things in order. We look after the main pillars of health. What are those main pillars? We know what most of them are. Exercise, nutrition, minimizing stress, positive mental attitude, rest, and having a healthy nervous system and a good, strong structure. 
These are the important things that we must have in place. And this is what I want to do today is help you get this mindset clear that our destiny is in our own hands. And, and to do that, we want to be proactive. I think you know I'm right. You know, when I think about the, the really important things in life, I, for one, have certainly had a wake-up call over the last few months. And that now I really understand what is important. It is health. And it's quality time with your loved ones. And, to, and if you're going to have quality time with your loved ones, they need to be healthy and you need to be healthy. Okay? This, these things are irreplaceable once they're gone. So we need a better premise in life. Premise. What does that mean? We, well, this premise I'm talking about is that actually we're born, we're born healthy. By the way we have, we have developed as a species over the years, the weak have died off and the strong have, have survived. Okay, so as a species, we've got stronger and stronger and stronger to an extent that health is the norm. We were born with all the genes and all the potential for vital, vital and abundant health. This is normal. Our body is smart. It knows what it's doing. The same, that same incredible energy and that intelligence that grew us from a baby, from two cells, into a magnificent adult that we all are, that same, that same intelligence didn't abandon you when you became mature. It lives inside you. It knows what it's doing. Your body is so, so, so smart. And what controls it? Well, obviously, the nervous system. The brain communicating through the body, this is the, main, this is the main controlling intelligence of the body. Where does it live? How does it communicate with the body? Through the spine, which luckily is encased in a suit of armor. Here we have a spine. Inside it, inside this strong structure, is a ve very delicate spinal cord. Now, if we keep things in alignment, we're going to... We get good flow. Everything is as intended. Intended. If things start going wrong and we get twisted or bad posture or something, or the stresses of modern life, that's something from the outside affecting what is so vital and important on the inside. If, as long as we protect ourselves from these stresses, we will be abundantly healthy. So... Obviously, this is a talk about headaches, but headaches seem to come with neck pain, and shoulder pain, and, and low back pain, and, and various other things. These are the stresses of life. These are the common things that come into our clinics on a daily basis. Now, I've said it there, and you. So let's try and relate this to yourself. Let's try and relate it to your family members. Perhaps... Uh, you might think about how many hours, for example, you spend at a computer. Is that putting stresses and strains on your body? Why don't you pop it in the chat? Why don't you, why don't you tell us what aches and pains or headaches? What time do you get headaches? Think about them. Pop them in the chat, Mike. Why not? And then we can perhaps address them. I do like to apply what I'm talking to to the people I'm, uh, I'm actually speaking to. So the nervous system we know controls everything, but let's think a little bit more deeply about this incredible nervous system that we have. Most of us do get pain. I get pain on, on most days. It's telling me to make some changes. I make those changes and then I'm fine. So this is feeling. Now, there's a difference obviously between feeling and function. These are two great areas of the nervous system, but let's go in a bit deeper. There are three areas of the nervous system that we want to touch on right now. We've got the motor nerves. Motor nerves, so this is what moves the bones, okay? If we have problems with the motor nerves, we end up with weakness or spasms or fatigue or tightness. And then we've got the autonomic nerves. The autom this is basically how the body works. It's all the, it's how the, uh, the autonomic nervous system 
controls the, the sympathetics, the, the parasympathetics. It's the control of the organs, the most important things that we have. Okay, now, these motor nerves and these autonomic nerves, they're about 40% each of our nervous system. But then we have our sensory nerves. These are only, or at most, 20%. These are the things that you feel. These are the, usually the things that bring people into our clinics. Obviously, it's the pain. Remember, the pain is the body telling you something's wrong. People come into our clinics with pain. Finally, they've listened to their body, and they're looking for some kind of solution. So let's think a little bit more about this, this, this nervous system, these three, these three areas that are so, so important. What is the answer when the body starts to go into dysfunction and we start to get pain? Is it medicine? Is it really going to be medicine? Medicine which is all about symptoms and disease? Obviously, headaches is a symptom. Is it a disease? Not necessarily. But it could become a disease if the cause of the problem is ignored. Now, medicine is the healthcare system that predominates in, in Singapore. We all use medical doctors from time to time. They're amazing at what they do. But we do know that it's sick care. And we tend not to go to the medical doctor until we have a symptom or a disease or a condition. Now, thinking intelligently, I think this is a little bit too late to go to the doctor because I really do think that we be, should be cutting off the problem before it manifests in, a, in sickness or, or disease. So here's my dangerous belief number two. People actually think drugs work. Well, some of them do. Pain medication actually works quite well. And no wonder people become addicted to these things because it's not fixing the cause of the problem. The pain keeps coming back. So you keep taking these meds. Now, what happens? Well, the body gets used to it. So you have to dig, you have to take more and more of these of these drugs, these dangerous drugs, and then you've got to go stronger and then stronger again. Eventually, the drugs won't work. All right. So eventually, if you keep taking the drugs, they won't work. But they will also do serious damage. Why do you think on the back of those drugs packets there is small writing? What is that? These are the side effects. Yeah. Now, they're very, very small writing. Why? Why is the writing so small? Well, there's a lot of side effects. They've got to get a lot of writing onto that label. But also, they don't really want you to read it. They have to put it there legally but they really don't want you to, uh, to read it. Why? Because drugs are actually dangerous. There are side effects. In fact, there's actually another type of headache. It's called a medication headache. And this has become due to the toxic overload from taking too many meds. We really want to think more cleverly than just taking, pushing these dangerous, dangerous drugs all the time. So my dangerous belief number three is well, we can ignore the problem and it will go away. Well, sometimes it will. If you've bashed your head and you've got a, a throbbing headache because you've, you've bashed your head, yeah, if you, if you ignore the problem, if you rest, it probably will go away. But if you have a headache due to some kind of dysfunction inside, then it might it might dissipate, it might go away for a short time, but you can guarantee that that problem is coming back. Ignoring a problem, putting our head in the sand, if you like, is probably not the best thing to do. So let's move on to chiropractic. Why am I so passionate that I'm always talking about these subjects? Well, many, many, many years ago, some 25 years ago, when I was thinking about being a doctor, I realized I did not want to be medicating people on a daily basis. I wanted to help people live amazing lives and live without pain, express wonderful wellness, vitality all the way through life. 
And so he studied life and what makes people live. And the wonderful paradigm that, that I'm a, I as a chiropractor and my family and my close friends, the paradigm that we live to is really, if we put so much life and vitality into our body, there really is no room for disease. This is true healthcare. This is wellness. This is, this is being proactive. And this is smart living. This is what I, well, this is the big idea. And when I got that big idea, I've been shouting that ever since because people that don't understand this big idea are missing probably one of the greatest lessons of life. And it's all about getting the most out of life. You certainly can't get the most out of life if you suffer from chronic headaches. It's like having the dimmer switch of life turned down. You can't enjoy anything. So don't take drugs. Let's find the cause of the problem. So I spoke before about mindset. I'm, I spoke before about, about posture a little bit and about the nervous system. Now, what I'm really talking about are laws of the universe. We've got to work with our physiology. Physiology means how the body works. We have a basic physiology, which are laws, and we need to work with them. Yes, the, the nervous system controls everything. Yes, it runs down that spine and it goes to every single organ, every tissue, every cell of your body. And of course, it needs uninterrupted flow from the brain to all the tissues and back. It's a communication highway, backwards and forwards. If this communication highway is interfered with, you can bet your body's going to give you some body signal or a sign, and that is probably going to be pain, right? The nervous system controls all the functions of the body. The body needs to work efficiently. And when you look at this illustration, you can see the complexity of the body inside. Everything in its place, everything connected back to the brain. The, our efficiency of breathing and blood circulation, it all needs everything to be in place. If things get twisted, everything, if we move out of balance, then things will start to go wrong. Any postural distortion will always affect the, the transmission of the three most important things, our blood, our oxygen, and our nerves. So this nervous system controls everything and it keeps everything in balance. Balance. It's called in, in, in medical circles, homeostasis. And everything, when it's kept in balance in homeostasis, is good. That's where health is. When the body loses balance, it loses homeostasis for whatever reason, and it can't establish a balance, then that is disease, okay? Health is balanced, disease is a loss of balance that the body, the body cannot recover. And we must, when you, when, when you look at this, this, this body, we've got to have things organized and we've got to have things exactly in the right place. So balance is health, homeostasis. So what will drive us away from balance and give us these symptoms that we don't want? Well, things that from the outside that are detrimental and affect things on the inside are called stressors. Stress. There's three types of stress that we worry about. We can call them the three T's. Thoughts, toxins, and traumas. Thoughts, emotions. You think that if somebody's giving you a hard time or your boss is on your, on your case or, 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 or you're upset with somebody, that, these, that this isn't a stress that can, can, can affect your health? Of course it is. What about toxins? They come from the outside, but toxins could also be deficiencies. So deficiencies is not enough good stuff. Toxins is too much bad stuff. These would both be stressors and the, by this, we could be talking about food that we're putting into our body with all those, 
with all those chemicals, all those hormones, all those all those things that are not designed for health. They're d designed for shelf life, perhaps. We really need to try and keep them out of our body. And then the third great stress of the body, obviously, are traumas. Now, traumas, we all have trauma, right? So what could cause a trauma to our spine that might make things go wrong? Well, here's the spine. Here is the, all, the, all the organs you see. And you can see the brain communicating through the spine and going out to the organs. Now, I like to, I like to think of my body as, as my home. This is where I live, and I'm going to live there for the best part of 100 years or more. Now, if I think about my home, and this is my home, what protects my home? How do I know when things are going wrong? Well, I have a circuit breaker. That tells me where the problem is and I can then fix it, okay? So I've, what I've done here is I've superimposed a circuit breaker onto the spine. Now, obviously we don't have a circuit breaker, but what we do have is we have a sign that tells us where something's wrong. So you might have a pain somewhere in that spine. So maybe you have a problem right here, yeah? And if there's a problem here, just perhaps it could be causing pressure on the nerve that exits here that goes to the lungs or perhaps to the, the stomach or the digestive tract. Of course, this, this could be a problem. So this is part of the big idea of chiropractic. Now, what we call these things, these, these, these lesions in the body that cause a breakdown in communication and then cause bigger problems down the line, we call them subluxations. Now, a subluxation is a word that we use quite a lot um, in, in chiropractic circles. It's basically what we look for and what we treat. And it is the number one reason for headaches. Number one. And we're going to understand that today. Because a subluxation involves joint misalignment, soft tissue damage, perhaps some inflammation, inflammation, pressure. This is going to cause nerve irritation. Nerve irritation is going to have some kind of result at the end of that nerve, whether it be whether it be blood pressure going up, or whether it just be or pain down the leg, or maybe a headache. With these muscle spasms, we quite quite often get muscles. Um, with these subluxations, we quite often get muscle spasms, and we get lost joint imbibition. What does that mean? Well, the discs are designed to move. As they move they suck in the, the blood supply, the, the nutrition. Uh, the movement actually hydrates and provides nutrition to these important discs. When a joint is fixated, which happens with these areas, these lesions in the spine, then we get breakdown in the discs and then we can get a herniated disc, which is what you see in the illustration. The red bit, you see the disc is actually protruding and pressing on the nerve. Well, this again, if, imagine this is happening up at the top of your neck and this nerve is going to this region. Could this cause a headache? Of course it could. But one of the most important or perhaps the most important thing with any lesion in the spine, any subluxation, is that it's always accompanied by a, um, an increase in stress hormones. Stress hormones. So stress is the, probably the number one cause of disease in Singapore and certainly the number one cause of disease in all modern cities. These are things from the outside affecting things on the inside, knocking us out of homeostasis, okay? Subluxations, if they are not treated, not corrected, then we will actually be out of homeostasis. So, Let's think about the causes of subluxation, misalignment, le lesions of the spine that could interfere with the, 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 the running, the, the intelligent control of the body. Well, lifestyle. Almost everything we do on a daily basis can actually cause these subluxations. Bad habits tend to add together. We call it bioaccumulation. One thing adds to another. We drive around in cars, sitting down. 
we we sit at work all day sitting down it's affecting the, the alignment of our body there's all sorts stresses from work these are all stresses from the outside that potentially can cause problems on the inside obviously macro trauma Ooh, that looks painful that guy's gone gone a tumble falling down the stairs this is macro trauma now could could this cause lesions in the spine that could cause tightness or pinched nerves that can cause headaches of course it can we also have micro trauma now this is probably the number one cause of pain in singapore and i'm not just talking about headaches i'm talking about all pain so let's make some sense of this micro trauma is something small that you do repeatedly that adds up and adds up and adds up and adds up until it becomes a big thing if you think about let's just think about some an area that's not uh, that's not a headache let's just think about hips the medical profession love to get busy replacing hips it's a big business nowadays now are they caused by uh, macro trauma well sometimes it could be a, a, a nasty break when somebody falls down the stairs but usually it's the micro trauma of a weight bearing joint that is out of alignment and then traumatized by step after step after step 6000 steps a day plus or minus every step is a is a weight bearing joint out of alignment of course this is going to build up no wonder the pain starts in our 30s gets worse in our 40s and in our 50s people are starting to look for for some serious answers and that's why these orthopedic surgeons are doing so well we've got to think of our body as as basically a great big stack of joints every one of these joints in, in our body is a weight bearing joint we simply must be in alignment if we have twists in the spine then then every single jolt of our spine every step is a micro trauma on the joints no wonder our spines start to break down but think about our neck let's think about our neck let's move on a little bit tech neck there's a lot of talk about tech neck nowadays so it's it's in every building that i go to i see it even my in my house i know that i'm i'm guilty of it i'm sure everybody on this call is guilty of it but we need to be aware that it's causing damage tech neck what does it even mean well technology is everywhere here in the illustration um this 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 bonio has got his head stuck in a in what looks like an iphone yeah but look at the shape of the neck it's the head's gone way way forward is that going to be good no because if you're doing it all the time there's going to be stress that stress is going to build up and it's actually going to change the shape of the neck gradually the, tr the neck's going to become more and more traumatized there's going to be more stresses in that upper region and of course headaches are going to result let's look a little bit more about this tech neck because this is the most common cause of headaches right now in singapore so this is what your neck perhaps should look like you see the head is is nicely balanced on a, on a neck that forms a curve this curve is a spring okay or a shock absorber and you'll see between the bones the white bones the dark discs they look like they're in pretty good shape because we have a curve now this is what we want now actually this person at the bottom of the neck i can see some bone spurs just starting to grow now this actually means that this person does hold their neck forward and the body's starting to uh, to remodel itself now if you hold your head forward for too long i'm going to get my bowling ball out so what is this this is probably one of my one of my favorite um props if you if, if you like this is a bowling ball obviously this is about five or six kilos it is the weight of your head it is the weight of your head your head simply must be on your shoulders because if it goes forward then you can see what it's doing it's causing stress and strain on my wrist but if this is your neck 
it's causing stress and strain in the joints in your neck. Now this will compound, it will build up gradually, gradually, gradually over the years until you've got real, real damage. Now what you see here on the, on the right, you see the red line is the shape that this person's neck should be. And then we have the, the black dotted line. This is the actual shape. You can see the heads come forward and you can see that it's actually kinking the wrong way. And in our clinics, you might hear the word kyphosis. Kyphosis means a reversed curve of the neck. Now, this is, unfortunately, is extremely common in Singapore. Nearly always ends up with tension, nearly always ends up with headaches, but it does always end up with quite advanced arthritis. So if we look inside that red, uh, the, the yellow circle, we can see a very, very unhealthy joint. There's very little disc space. The, the bones are all, almost touching, and we can see bone spurs growing there. This is a very, very unhealthy joint. Almost certainly stiffness, definitely pain, premature aging of spine, stiffening hastens aging, aging hastens stiffening. We're now entering this vicious circle. The body will give us aches, pains, signs, and symptoms that something's not, not right there's a very good chance that the tension up here will cause headaches, and that's the body getting really quite serious that something needs to change. On the left hand, you can see, on the left hand illustration, what you can see there is the forward nature of the head has actually caused the disc to start to, be, get, to get pushed backwards into the spinal cord. Obviously, this is very dangerous. It's something that you really, really don't want to happen. It's life-changing. Um, you do not want to see an orthopedic surgeon with a slip disc in the neck because really it's very difficult for them because it's so close to the brainstem, it's so close to the spinal cord. We're talking very dangerous surgeries and all they do is cut something out. They're not fixing the cause of the problem, which of course is alignment, okay, and balance. So let's keep moving. Here's an illustration that, that, that we use quite a lot. On, on the left, you can see the guy whose head weighs 12 pounds. Well, he has balance. He probably has no pain, shoulder pain, no tightness. He's probably quite happy. In the middle, the, the guy, his head has come forward, probably an inch and a half. Well, look at the weight of the head now. Remember the bowling ball, when I held it forward, it got heavier. This is due to leverage. Now, that, this increased weight has got to be met by the body. So everything is going to tighten up. We're going to stiffen for sure. If it's not corrected, then because of gravity, it's going to gradually get worsened. And we see that guy on the right, that guy with a 42-pound head. My God, he is going to be stiff. He's all, he's all rounded. You can call that. You can call that hunchback if you like. He's going to be very stiff. I think all you need to do is hold an iPhone there and you think that you can, you, I think you can get the picture, right? We've got to avoid this progression. But the scary thing is it's happening younger and younger in life. We're getting teenagers coming into our clinic with headaches, tremendous pain and tension in their spines. We're getting people in their early 20s with spinal arthritis. Now, this is not going to be good going forward for these, these people. So... Please help your family members get back into balance, help them be more comfortable in their own bodies. So remember, subluxation causes, always causes soft tissue damage, inflammation, nerve irritation, core tension. Core tension is probably, an, well, it's certainly an increasing problem in Singapore. Because as the posture gets worse with forward head posture, there is something called, it's, it's actually, it's, it's the situation where the spinal cord gets pulled tight. And it's actually called tethering. The head goes forward and the spinal cord gets pulled tight and it's pulling in here at the bottom of the brainstem. No wonder we're getting more um, headaches. No wonder we're getting more migraines nowadays. All right. So we need to take these, these misalignments. We need to take these postures. 
these subluxations very, very seriously. So let's think about posture. In fact, let's go back into good posture, shall we? I'm sure some of you already are, are slouching a bit. It's the end of a long day, perhaps. So that guy on the left, slouch posture, if that's you, let's correct it right now. Let me introduce you to what is, I believe, really, really good posture. Okay? So let's just think, understand what it means. So in the, in, the, in the middle there, you've got a breastbone, a sternum. So go ahead and lift it as high as you can. But what you did is you just tipped your head back onto your shoulders. And then why don't you go and pull your head back onto your shoulders where they should be. Now, what you can do now is you can open and relax your shoulders. Now, you, what you'll find is that you've actually got a, a slight curve in the low back, which is healthy. You've got more space in, in, the, in the chest for breathing. Your head is, is back on your shoulders. You should feel quite relaxed. Now, if you go ahead and engage your abs, that is a really good place to be. Now, I really think that this wants to be your, your default posture, if you like. Okay, your default. So this is the posture you go back to. If you're feeling achy or whatever, go back to this posture. Reset yourself and do it on a regular basis, so certainly a couple times of an hour. Now, I've also written on the bottom there, and move. Now, we have this, this life that is very, that, that, well, it's all sitting, don't we? We have this life where we are expected to sit all day, every day. Well, just don't do it. We need to move. We need to move at least a couple of times an hour. I've trained myself to stand up and move around. I leave my work station quite often. I sit down, I reset. Make it a habit. The more good habits you make, the healthy you're going to be in the future. Okay? So let's remember this default. This is what you want. Okay? So tech neck, it's something that builds up. It always leads to chronic conditions. Chronic, it means it's long-term. The more chronic it is, probably the longer it's, it's definitely the longer it's been there, means the, uh, the, the, the more difficult it is to, 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 to solve, uh, take away the cause of the problem. So these problems need to be addressed as early as possible. So my dangerous belief, number four, is that nothing can be done about it. I am so sick of hearing Clients coming into my clinics and tell me that their, their doctors told them, well, I'm afraid you're just going to have to live with it. There's nothing can be done. It's just these are normal. They are not normal. They are so common that people think they're normal. There's a very subtle difference there. Headaches are simply not normal. What is normal is no headaches. How do I know that? Because I'm pretty normal and I don't get headaches. I feel some tension every now and again, and I work it out. I get adjusted. I know what exercises to do. I do not let the tension build up. I don't get headaches. Okay? That's the life that I want for you. For you. So let's start to think a bit more about correcting the causes of these problems. Obviously, where there are bad habits, we want to create good habits. Okay? Posture is the number one, but we can think about how we sleep, activities of, of daily life. We should be doing some specific exercises to correct all these problems that are being caused by, by this modern life. And I'm going to show you some very, very simple exercises that are actually fun and highly effective. And, of course, we need chiropractic adjustments. Now, the analogy is that the three-legged stool. You can't do one of these. You can't only address one of these, one of these pillars, if you like, of, of treatment. There's got to be three stools. There's got to be three legs on the stool or it will fall over. So we need to, to address the habits. We need to do the exercises and we need the adjustments. So let's think about the different types of headaches that we get. The number one headache and this is, this is by far the greatest problem as far as headaches are concerned, especially in Singapore, are stress headaches. These are tension headaches or cervicogenic headaches. These are basically headaches that are coming from the neck. They are, what do they feel like? Well, they feel like they're pulling in here. Sometimes they come around the side, but there's always a tightness. There's always a pulling involved. How do we deal with them? Well, 
we as chiropractors we know the problem we get pulling up here so we're definitely going to address c1 to c7 because these are cervicogenic we're going to be adjusting the neck for sure we're going to get the stress out of the neck we're going to realign things take pressure off nerves and then of course all those tight shoulders the upper spine that goes with these postures we're going to be addressing those so for sure we're going to be um we're, we're going to be adjusting the upper thoracic spine so once you've had a few adjustments then you will find that these stress headaches will almost certainly um, diminish our success rate is well over 90 percent with these headaches the second type of headaches which are extremely uh, common are sinus headaches so what does that mean well sinus headaches they they actually have a um, they have a component of a chemical component because they are they involve the the spaces in the sinuses, the cavities, the body cavities, front of the head and in the cheeks, we have these cavities. When there is inflammation in these cavities, it creates pressure. Now, this, this where does this chemical come from? Well, it, it's coming from inflammation, and that's coming from uh, something that the body is not happy with. So triggers, maybe it's some dehydration, maybe it's some kind of allergen, maybe it's some kind of Maybe you, there's an allergy to lactose, extremely, extremely uh, common that people have lactose intolerance or perhaps gluten intolerance. These are things that cause an inflammatory condition in the body. If it causes pressure in the sinuses, you will get a headache. Now, while I'm talking about the, these different types of headaches, we need to understand that headaches are multifactorial, which means there's nearly always more than one factor um, affecting us. We can go back to the stress headaches. If somebody has a sinus headache, you can bet part, part of that headache, part of the cause is stress. And it, it's, it's the buildup of, of, of tension um, because of posture alignment, okay? So this is why we will always be adjusting the neck, whether it be a migraine, whether it be sinus, whether it be stress headache, there will always be a component that is affecting the, that is caused by the neck. OK. Um, now we move to the dreaded migraines. What is a migraine? I, I, luckily, I've never had a migraine, but boy, have I seen plenty of clients with migraines. So if you don't have migraines, well, imagine the worst migraine you've ever had and then 10 exit. 10 times it it's these are really headaches where you just want to lock yourself away so what let's understand what's happening here well there's nearly always a hormonal component with migraines hormonal what are hormones well hormones are the chemistry of life it's the chemicals that that flow around the body altering the physiology now when obviously hormones they they, they rise they fall at different times we can think about uh, women with, with, their, with their monthly cycles, but there's also stress hormones and happy hormones, and there's hormones for, for all sorts of different conditions and states that the body's in. So these hormones are affecting our state, they are affecting our physiology, and when the body's not happy, and it's really not happy, then it gives you pain, big pain up here, and these are the migraine headaches. Again, as, as chiropractors, we are going to address all the causes. One of the main causes of the migraine headaches will be stresses in the spine. There will be tension up here. We are definitely going to be adjusting C1 especially, but definitely we're going to be working with any lesions, any subluxations in the neck. Also, the tension in the upper spine, we're going to be dealing with that. And then we're also going to be working with the nerves that, that affect the, the viscera, the, the organs in the body. Now, part of the big idea that, that we work with is that there's a connection, a very intimate connection between the brain, the immune system, and the gut. And the gut really is where the outside meets the inside in the body. And the, the gut is something that we have to look after. Now, what controls the gut? Obviously, well, partly hormones, but definitely the nervous system. So we are certainly going to be checking the mid-spine and the lower spine when we're dealing with, with migraines. So moving on from that, 
let's go back to these um <clears throat> these the the three steps to uh, to correct the cause of the problem we want to break the bad habits but we want to we want to always uh, bring in the right exercises so let's think a little bit more about this the moment we're going to go to these exercises but i've mentioned i've just mentioned um, other causes. I've mentioned the gut. Um, I've mentioned stresses, things from the outside. So we want to address all the factors. So it would help you enormously, I believe, if you if you are a headache sufferer, to start making a diary. If you have a blank day, no headache, great. But if, if you have a headache, then why don't you write in what's happened that day? Have you been at work? Have you been in meetings? What have you been eating? What postures have you been doing? What exercises have you been doing? Or perhaps what haven't you been doing? It'll be very, very useful when we address these headaches to work out, a, get, get, a, get a picture, get a, like a, a roadmap of, of what's happened that, that's led to these headaches. That'd be a very, very good strategy. Equally a good strategy would be things that we want to try and avoid. So think about it. We want to avoid dehydration. That's definitely one of the triggers. So drink more water, get adequate, adequate sleep, limit alcohol, drink caffeinated rather than caffeinated coffee and tea. We could try an elimination diet. So cut out some of the things that might be causing uh, an upset to our system. And then we gradually put things back. We, could, we should avoid nitrates. Nit nitrates are, are some of the preservatives in, in, in meats and things like that. These tend to cause um, migraines quite a lot. Strong smells can really, trigger, he uh, can really trigger headaches as well. These are things that are putting inputs into the nervous system. If they're unpleasant, they can trigger things. Some people swear by ginger tea or essential oils. Some people lo love various herbal remedies and many people love CoQ10. It tends to calm down the nervous system. Definitely, we want to exercise more. I love to do my yoga. I do it on a daily basis. I do breathing exercises as well. These all help. And one final thing that you should definitely try if you do have chronic headaches is take a warm bath every now and again. Because what, what will happen is it will open your blood vessels and your blood pressure will drop. And if, if, the, if your blood pressure is, is, is part of the cause of these headaches, then these, can be, these actions can be very, very soothing. So let's think about some daily habits. So I'm just going to very quickly, I'm going to stop sharing this now. And I'm going to, just what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the setup. Right, welcome to my dining room. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the setup that I want you to compare your setup at home with mine, okay? So I'm talking about your computer setup. We're all spending too many hours slumped forward at our desk. It's causing many, many, many of these problems. So I'm just going to show you how I set myself up when I'm working remotely, okay? So hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully you can see me. So I'm just going to just mm -hmm. describe how I set myself up. This is just my dining room table. So I'm gonna pull myself right in. I brought myself up with a cushion because I want to be at the right height. I want my legs to be at 90 degrees and I want my arms to be supported to take the weight off my shoulders. I can slump badly, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pop a, a towel, a rolled up towel in my low back. And now I, I already I feel good, I feel supported. Everything's at the right height. Now what I've got here is my laptop, but I brought it up to my eye height. If it was down here, it would be bringing me into bad posture. So simply using a very simple laptop stand, I brought it up. Now all I need is a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, and I'm ready to go. I'm push, I've got things away, pushed away, so my arms are supported. My back supported, my head can be on my shoulders. I'm actually in really good shape here. I could work in this position all day. Of course, I need to move as well, but I think you get the, the picture. Mm -hmm. Might be a good idea if you compare this setup I have with the setup that you, you use. Okay. Any questions, 
why don't you pop it in the chat and we can address that at the end so let's go back to sharing the slides we're just about to come to the end so some simple simple exercises why wlt think in terms of you will love this or you will live taller let's just let's see what this means so this is what you can do why don't you do this let's just click on this why don't you do this with me so you can get a feel for what i'm doing so first of all we're going to go into a why so we're going to lift our sternum like i explained before pull our head back into a nice big Y. We're opening things up. This is healthy. Pull your arms back. You'll feel a nice stretch across the front and it's creating an opening. This is a great place to start. From that, we increase the, the, the stretch. So we drop down into the W. Now, when you do that and you pull your, your arms back, you can start to feel more stretch along the front and you can feel a little bit of compression in the back as the shoulder blades move, move together. Okay, keep the, keep the arms back, okay? Now we're gonna go down to the L, L. So we're gonna drop the arms down and the arms are out, just like, just like you can see there. And what I want you to do is bring the, the hands back, back, and, so, and your thumbs. Imagine your thumbs are being pulled together. Now what you'll feel there is a really good stretch in the shoulder, right across the stretch and you'll feel the good compression in the uh, between the shoulder blades that's what you want to feel it's always we're keeping our head back so we've done y w l and then we go back we go up into a nice t always bringing our arms back always lifting up lifting our our sternum and keeping our head back okay so y w l t you will love these if you do these often I think you should do these certainly a couple of times in the morning, a couple of times in the afternoon. They will make a difference. We've tried all sorts of chiropractors. We need, to, we need it to be simple and we need it to be easy. It's got to be fun. So why WLT? Just try it, do it, do it often, and I promise you it will make a difference. Try and hold each, each position for about 15 to 20 se seconds. Okay. So I've gone through an awful lot of stuff there. Basically, what we're doing is we are reducing the stressors from the outside that are causing tension and problems on the inside that will eventually manifest in headaches. Okay? So I've given you a lot of information there. Uh, we've been talking for about the well, best part of an hour. Um, if there's any questions, I, um, I'm going to address them in one moment. Um, in the meantime, if anybody, if you know anybody that, that needs to come in, has headaches or, or suffers any kind of pain, then do snap a picture of, the, of this QR code. All my details there. We are here to help. Um, we have been here in Singapore for 10 years. Next month is our 10th year anniversary. So I'm really, really, really proud for what we've achieved. We have helped an awful lot of people live life um, with more vibrant health and, and less pain and suffering. So this is what we want for you. If you, you have any family members then take uh, that, that, that need what we do, then use that QR code. It's going to take you straight in. It's only $45, usual price at $170. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, I want to thank you all for listening to me. I've enjoyed the presentation. Hopefully we've got something out of it. I'm just going to look at the, um, the questions, see what's there. Okay, one from Anthony. When a headache is triggered, is there any recommendation to ease it? I've been depending on painkiller and sleep. Okay, right. Well, this this is a this is obviously the reason why I did this talk. Um, headaches, remember, are multifactorial, so there will be more than one factor, and you can guarantee that there are triggers. Okay, try and identify what the trigger is. So that's where the diary came into. Okay, maybe it's dehydration. Maybe it's this. Maybe, it, maybe, it's, maybe it's fatigue. Maybe it's whatever, some, some kind of stress. But try and, try and reduce the stresses that's causing, that is the trigger. 
But believe me, the underlying cause that, it, that keeps you close to a threshold that only takes a small trigger to trigger that headache is probably going to be structural stress. These are um, which are gravitational forces that are around around your spine, especially around the neck. So get your alignment sorted out. Get your posture sorted out. Do some simple exercises that I've shown you, and things will start to improve. Cheryl, does chiropractic adjustment help with hormonal migraines? I related to monthly cycle. How does this work since the cause isn't due to incorrect posture pinching of nerves? Okay, well, here we go again. <laughs> so basically, as I said, there are, there are, there is nearly always several causes that accumulate. It's called bioaccumulate. If you have a problem in the spine, then you're going to have some stiff, stiffness and some pulling. If you then have some dehydration, that gets you closer to a threshold. Then you have your monthly, um, you have your monthly hormonal changes, and then that that tips you over. Um, we do know that this is the cause, but that, that this is the case because. Quite seriously, when we when we help people realign their spine, when we help them spot the 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 triggers, then then nearly all headaches improve. Nearly all. I mean, literally in thousands of clients over the years, I've had really only a handful of headaches that I haven't been able to to help. So think about the various causes. Um, if if hormones were the cause then every single female would, would, would have headaches every single month, okay? It really is not the main cause. It is the trigger, okay? So you've got to look to the structure. You've got to look to the nervous system. And this is what we do with our chiropractic. This is what we do by improving posture and, of course, improving uh, lifestyle, okay? And I'm not seeing any more there coming in. So... Again, I'd like to thank you all tremendously for, for staying with me. Uh, a lot of information I've gone through quite quickly. Um, if there's anybody, if we can help anybody, please remember we're here for you. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the clinics. And uh, I wish you a very, very, very pain-free rest of the day. No headaches. And uh, we look forward to, to helping you with your, with your health in the future. So thanks very much. That's, I'm Dr. Tim, and I'd like to thank you very much for being being here today. Um, you are all very, very welcome. Pauline, Vincent, Cheryl, Anthony, Ace Cho, thank you for listening. Uh, I'm very, very happy that you've all come on. So thank you very much. I'll say good night, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.